Now, just when you thought it was safe to get in, get on with the, the winter, and it was a pretty wintry weekend we've just been through, there were blizzards in the mountains bringing some good snow dumps and it was cold, wet and windy across much of southern Australia. But in the northern hemisphere, as I showed you last week, there have been heat waves and they're claiming a new record for the hottest day on the planet ever. Big claim, all right. Do you think the United Nations would get right into that? The situation we are witnessing now is the demonstration that climate change is out of control. And one reason more for increased ambition and increased justice. This is the moment in which we all need to assume our responsibilities. Yeah, of course they did, and plenty of media got in on the act too. Nine News here in Australia tweeted about this being the hottest day in at least 100,000 years, and they attached this clip from the American Green Left outfit, CNN. The hottest day on record globally just happened. In fact, it happened on Tuesday. The average temperature reached 17.18 degrees Celsius. That's nearly 63 degrees Fahrenheit. In China, a heat wave pushed temperatures into the mid-30s. And in the United States, Texas saw temperatures reach anywhere from 110 to 120 Fahrenheit. Joining us now is CNN meteorologist Chad Myers. And Chad, just put this into perspective for, for us just around the world in terms of the heat heat just how hot was it really you know i mean this has never been seen before since we've had satellites yeah since we've had satellites hey eh? was that a freudian slip the hottest day since they started measuring them this way that's a pretty much what he's saying there which was my point last week of course now the meteorologist then went on to say the Earth would have been hotter sometime in the distant past, millions of years ago, but he attributed the new record to human-induced global warming. Now, is this data that they're talking about interesting? And should we be pursuing all this with the utmost scientific endeavour and rigour? Of course we should. The more information and research we get, the better. The, we need to know everything we can about exactly what's happening with the climate. But until you can have equivalent methods used, until you can measure temperatures with the same methods to determine the global average someday in 1980, say, or the global average temperature in 1950, let alone the 19th century or the Middle Ages, then we've got to be very careful about overclaiming, don't we? You've got to compare like with like. Yet that doesn't seem to matter much in the current climate, where any number or any claim will simply be used to fuel climate alarmism.